Children's on the beach. First game. Come on, Gabe. Hey. Mira. Get, go out there and do a big old jump splash. Go do a big old jump splash. Go out and hey, go to look, look, look at that big wave, go get it. I'm gonna shoot with my sandals. I'm gonna wash away. Keep going! I'm surprised that there weren't people that didn't beg to be off of that jury. It, it was traumatic. They're trying to show us that what he did was worthy of death. And, uh, and that's where the true trauma came in. It was just as horrific as I expected it to be. You know, sometimes I'd come home at the end of the day after, after a long day of testimony and just hug my kids. Uh, so the first couple of nights, I had a lot of trouble sleeping. Uh, anytime I would go to sleep, I would wake up with the images of those, of those autopsy photos. The similarities between these children and my own kids, it took, it took adjustment. It took me through, throwing myself back into my work spending time with my kids. And that pain kind of eased off a little bit. It was like an ache in the back of my, in the back of my head, a little bit of a headache. The hard thing was immediately after the trial, the new Toy Story came out. One of the main characters is Woody and I handled that doll that had been ripped to pieces. Seeing anything Woody related kinda, kinda made you stop and think and, and that, that hit other people in various ways. But we all talked about it. We were all connected on uh, WeChat. Uh, we call ourselves Team 18. That's kind of a kind of a moniker that we're sticking with for for all 18 of us. I went to Build a Bear the week after the trial, and I had five hearts put into a bear. For me, the teddy bear was was my way of of honoring the five children. And now I've got something that I can use to comfort my own children with. Once the trial was up and we were told you're released, you know, go forth into the world, and and uh, we we kept in touch with each other and we become part of each other's lives. You don't go through the kinds of things that we went through and not and not form a permanent bond with people. We did a get together the jury where we got together and had a cookout and talked about talked about things and uh, they had been talking all week about these little turtles uh, getting tattoos of turtle of five little turtles well there sitting on a log on the lake were five baby turtles we took that as a sign that the kids were that the kids were looking out at us we felt like they were thanking us we as a jury felt like we were a voice for those children. I will go to my grave with this experience. An investigation involving authorities in at least three states is underway after the bodies of five children were found wrapped in garbage bags in central Alabama. Anytime you see death, especially children, it's going to be hard even for the most seasoned law enforcement officer. Um, Nobody should see that. Investigators suspect 32-year-old Timothy Jones from Lexington County, South Carolina,
killed his children in South Carolina before driving with the bodies and dumping them in Alabama. Authorities say he was taken into custody in Mississippi on Saturday after a traffic stop when police noticed a smell in his car. Uh, it was uh, more of a smell of, um, of uh, dried blood possibly and, and some body fluids uh, mixed with some chemicals. That's what it appeared to be at that time. Authorities say Jones led them to the bodies in Alabama. Investigators in Alabama are searching that scene along a rural dirt road. They're seeing the worst thing you can probably imagine, um, but they're trained and they're focused on their job. Jones is being held in Mississippi and awaiting extradition to South Carolina. He was already wanted there on child neglect charges. His children range from one to eight years old. Their mother, who is divorced from Jones, reported them missing on September 3rd. A neighbor says he once reported the family to social services. Their kids were always walking around filthy. I think they wore the same clothes. Winter came, they didn't even have coats on, running around in shorts and all. Uh, little boy always had diapers hanging down to the ground. Authorities in Mississippi and South Carolina say they expect to file additional charges against Jones. Sandy Kozell, The Associated Press. Did your kids love their dad? Yes, they did. Can you tell the jury a little bit about your and Tim's relationship and how it was? Um, in the beginning, Tim and I had a very strong relationship. I, I think we found a lot in common. Um, I wasn't speaking to my family at the time, and I'm not sure if he was really speaking to his at the time when we first met. And we just kind of latched onto each other. Um, later on, um, any little thing would, would kind of spark an argument. And our relationship became volatile, uh, not just on Tim's side, on mine as well. Um, it got aggressive at times, violent. Um, and, but we, we managed to stick through it uh, because we had the children. Um, towards the end of our marriage, I think I was thinking in the best interest for my children that it was not a good environment. It was not something that children need to be seeing. Um, so we separated ourselves. Tim initially left uh, me and, and turned my power off and, and stuff. And I found it really hard because I just had nothing to offer my children. Um, I could not provide for them. I think as a mother, I was making the best choice that I could. I trusted my husband at the time because he gave me no reason not to with my children. He was a good father while we were married. He promised to take care of them. Um... We co-parented pretty good towards the end. Um, I think that's what took me back a little bit. I, I, I'm really sorry that everybody has to sit here for this. I don't think anybody saw this coming. And I know between myself and, and members of the Jones family themselves, I know if anybody had seen anything that we, any of us, any one of us would have done something about it. So we wouldn't, wouldn't be in this position today. Did you love him? I did. I did. You know, I, I'd be lying if I sat here and said that everything in our marriage is bad. Um, Tim and I had a lot of good times. It just becomes a point when things are volatile that you just make a choice your young children aren't seeing certain things. It, it's affecting them at a point. And you make a choice to separate yourself from that person. And it's hard to separate yourself from that person because that's all you've known. All I knew from 19 was Tim. Do you want Tim to put to death? I personally myself can't bring myself to want anybody to die um 
it's a it's a really hard I hear what my kids went through and I'm just being honest I hear what my kids went through and what they endured sorry and as a mother if I could personally rip his face off I would that's that's the mom in me that's, that's the mama bear in me wanting to just make him feel everything they felt I don't personally feel like I have the right to put anybody's uh, life in my hands I don't wish that upon anybody I don't wish the Jones family to feel what I felt losing my sons I do not wish to I will I will never have my grandbabies. I will never have have those things. They'll never get to see anything more of them. I'm trying to, I guess, take take a step back and trying to put myself in everybody's shoes because it has affected a lot more than just myself. It's even affected you guys. Um and you're just getting to know them. There's so much more about them. It's affected more than just me. I pray for Tim all the time. I pray. I pray for him often. I pray for his family often. I pray for my family. They didn't even have the opportunity to know them. I can't bring myself to want anybody to die. That's, that's something that I say because I have to be okay with what I, I say on this stand. I have to, this is something I have to live with. There's been a lot of loss on both sides of our families. Um, since my kids have died, I have lost 11 family members, if you include my children, within the past five years. One being an aunt that died the first day trials started of kidney failure. I've had many, many losses in pregnancy. I had eight babies all together with Tim. Eight. I had five healthy, two miscarriages, and a stillborn daughter, and now I have none of them. That's a lot of loss for a mother to feel. So I do sympathize with Miss Roberta. I do. I think her and I connected on that when, when when I was involved in the Jones family. Do you want mercy for Tim? I do. And I don't say it lightly. Um, he did not show my children mercy by any means. But my kids loved him. And if I'm speaking on behalf of my kids and not myself, that's what I would have to say. I'm not here for me. The mom in me just wants him to feel it. Everything that I feel, that my kids felt. Nothing justifies, nothing justifies what you've done. There, there's nothing you could possibly say that would justify what you've done to my babies. But they loved you. I loved you. I thought if we could reach a point to make things work for our children that we could. And then we'd argue again. And I'd say, there's the Tim. There's the Tim that I, I can't be with. It wasn't a game. It was a legitimate back and forth a fight emotionally. I hope for mercy for you. I pray for you often. And I say that without excusing what he's done. I say that wholeheartedly from the depths of my soul. I don't want anyone to feel anymore there's been so much loss a lot of loss 
I didn't have the chance to hear everything that had happened to my children, um, what, had, what had literally happened to them or, or what happened that night, the things that had led up to this, I wasn't aware of fully. So I was finding out along with you guys and the world what had happened to my children. So in retrospect, the mom and me was like, fry him, fry him, absolutely. Um, but from the, from the beginning, I have maintained that I, I just, I don't, I'm not a death penalty. I don't, I'm a strong believer in not, no death penalty. Um, but yes, I've had conflicting, very conflicting opinions, uh, with that in regards to, uh, what had happened to my children. Yes. Naturally. You spoke a little bit a few moments ago about some of the violence. There was an incident here in Lexington County, I believe that you actually reported to the police. Would it be the 18-wheeler? Can you tell us about that? Tim and I were leaving uh, Walmart and we had gotten into an argument and he said, hey, let's just play chicken then, you know, in a more stern argumentative tone. And I said, Tim, it's not funny. It's not effing funny. It's not effing funny. We had the kids in the back seat. So an 18 wheeler was coming this way and Tim steered the car where the 18 wheeler would hit me directly. And as we were driving toward the 18 wheeler, we, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't a, much of a distance at all. And Tim jerked the car that way and just started laughing about it. Like it was funny. Um, and I know he remembers that one. I did report that, uh, it scared me. My children were in the, in the car. Um, had that 18 wheeler hit, it would have killed. It would have killed everybody in the car. Is that the only incident that happened during the marriage? No. Okay. Were there times you laid hands on you physically? Yes. And you have since informed law enforcement about those times as well, correct? I did. Um, one incident in particular, we were arguing, I, I can't remember what it was about. But Tim grabbed me by the side of my head and headbutted me to the point where I just blanked out. And when I got up, it was kind of what just what just happened. Um, but I could feel my head kind of jar, my brain jar in my skull. And then shortly after that, he threw a phone at my face and broke my back teeth out. How much of that did the children witness? You know, I'd like to say none of it. My daughter, my oldest two probably witnessed the most. Um, Mira witnessed a lot of Tim's spitting in my face. I was always a whore uh, spitting in my face. I'm not talking just, I'm talking like hawking loogies and splitting, spitting them in my face. Um, he would take me by the side of my hair and smack my head as hard as he could off the car window or while I was pregnant and he, we would be arguing in the car, he would stomp the brake to where the belt would just tighten around my stomach. Um, he would, the verbal abuse was always that he would chop me up and feed me to the pigs because pigs will eat everything on me but my teeth and I'll never be found. So, what you just described, did that contribute to you leaving the marriage? It did. Um, you know, I think when you're in a situation, when you're in a marriage, and, it's, and it's, it was volatile both ways. I'm not gonna sit here and, and lie and, and sugarcoat and pretend that I'm this innocent woman. Um, when you're in a, in a relationship and it's like a tornado and a hurricane and there, it's like a head on collision, um, there's no coming down from that. There just isn't. It escalated more when we got here. And I think losing 
um, the Jones, like we would go to the Jones family's residence, his dad's residence, every Saturday, I believe, to have family dinners. That was my break out of my home. And I would vent to my mother-in-law or just have a moment and cry. Um, Cause that's, that's all I could do. When we got down here and we didn't have that support to just run to, I don't think either of us really knew what to do. I think I couldn't, I couldn't get my kids out to go to a park if I wanted to. I was stuck in a home for nine years all the time until we went to his dad's house. And I've got to say, as a woman speaking honestly, I mean, it, it'll drive you nuts. It'll just drive you nuts. It, it's like the homeschooling with Mira and Elias. I, I'm not a certified teacher. So if my kids weren't up to par with their grades, I'm just, I'm not, I don't, and I'm not going to pretend to be. The, and, you know, and I think his dad and his grandmother reiterated this too, though. When you make Tim mad, you make him mad. There's, there's no working with him. There's no in the middle. It's either this or nothing at all. So it, it was rare that he would work with me on something. I believe he did um, work with me on letting me take them to Chuck E. Cheese and treat them to that. That was special to me because that's something I really wanted to do. I paid for every visit. The two children, out of all, of all five of my children, the two that I always defended the most, uh, that I found myself having to defend the most, um, were Mira and Natan. Natan primarily. Natan did not have a problem expressing his feelings. Uh, he was very bold. If you did something, he would very much let you know to your face. You could have a zit and he'd let you know that it was ugly and to pop it. That's how upfront he was about his feelings. I think there was some resentment there. With Tim, I think there was resentment with my, my daughter, Mira, and my son, Natan, wanting to be with me. I truly do. Um, I think every parent, when you're in a situation where your kids are separated and you're fighting for your vying for their attention and their love you're, you're a pick me pick me in that situation i guess i didn't fight hard enough i didn't feel like putting my kids through this tug of war was going to make it any better i had my feelings and my opinions with their dad and i felt like when they got older they'd figure it out for themselves tim had other other methods of it and that night one of the sources of conflict that last night was that you had defended Natan. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. And he let me know it. Tim let me know it. Amber, his statements to you, you call him making statements that you would never have the children, that they would never live with you? He had many times, numerous times. He's made that statement on more than one occasion. Yes. I would say, Tim, what have I done as a parent? I mean, the the court didn't find anything wrong with me as a parent. I had joint custody. I chose as a mother what I thought was the most responsible thing with making him prim primary custodial parent. I obtained a car. I obtained a license. I got a management job and I got my high school diploma. All to prove to the system that I was a good enough parent. Um, it just wasn't good enough for Tim. And it never was going to be good enough for Tim. I didn't have anything to offer. He was very insistent on them not being around Sean. Sean being and then I found out about Crystal. Sean being your husband. Mm -hmm. your, your husband now. Yes, and he was 24, by the way. He was 24 when we got together. I was 27. Um, 
when you said you found out about Crystal, you had not been aware. No, I was not aware of that. I was not even aware. Currently, I live about five minutes from Tim's old place. And I was not aware that he had had that place um, set up and it had Crystal living there um, at all. It was not until the guardian ad litem stepped into the case. We were both equally paying for her, I believe, for her services. And um, she just, I said, well, who's watching my kids? You know, I'm a mom. I want to know who's watching my children because this isn't right. You know, if I'm not working, why can't he just drop them with me? I'd be willing to meet him and go there, whatever the case is, because they're familiar with me. It gives me a little extra time with them. That wasn't going to happen. That was a problem. Well, that's when I found out about Crystal and her being involved with, we still weren't divorced, and so my husband. Um, and it hit me the wrong way. Here, I'm being accused of sleeping with a 17-year-old boy, and it, it's him that's doing it. You know, I didn't jump into a relationship with Sean like everybody's proclaiming. That's not how it happened at all. And um, it's, it's unfair for that to be put out there. Um, every, everything, I feel like everything I was accused of is quite opposite. So the to, to make me look like the bad parent. The statements that you would never have the children, Amber... He's told you that on more than one occasion? Yes, ma'am. He did. Ms. Lord, you uh, were one of the babysitters for the Jones family. Is that right? Yes, sir. Can you tell me, how did you get to know Mr. Jones? How did you come to be involved? Um, through my friend, Christina Elke. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Um, what do you mean? Well, were you were you working for somebody else and then started working for, for Yes. Else? Yes, I was babysitting for another family, and the husband was the husband had put me through trying to put me through in their family stuff, and I got out of it. And Miss Elke was like, "Well, Tim's looking for somebody to come keep the kids in his home," so I was like, "Okay." And this was during the summer of 2014. Yes, sir. And uh, did you go to Tim's house? Yes, I kept the kids at the house. And what was, what was the condition of the house? When you said um, it would be like dishes, clothes everywhere, trash overflowing. Uh, were there bugs? Oh, yeah. There was like a few roaches. It was dirty? Yeah. Um, and did you try and clean it up? Yeah, I tried to like wash the dishes and try to pick up a little bit while I was there. Did y'all... Uh, Decided to take a trip. Yes, sir. And, and where did you go? We went to the beach. That Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach. Yes, sir. Do you recall when that was? Um, I don't know the Pacific time. I know by the time we got to the beach, it was probably about four, five o'clock that morning. It was like early that morning, and then we got up. Um, Mr. Jones went and got some some food from McDonald's. Um. Kids ate, and then we went down to the beach for a little bit, and after that, we left. Um, while y'all were at the beach, did y'all did y'all go down to play in the ocean? Yeah, um, Mr. Jones and the three oldest kids went down to the ocean, and I stayed up ahead with the babies, with the two babies. Okay, was there a time where Tim and the kids went swimming? There was a time where the kids was like up towards the water where the sand, where the water comes up. And as I looked out, I could hear somebody screaming like, come join, come on, come on, come get in the water, y'all missing out. And I looked further on and Mr. Jones was like further out in the water, like way out there in the water. He was trying to get the kids to come out to him? It was like he was calling the kids, he was calling everybody out and was telling everybody they're missing out of being in the water. And that was the first time he had ever been to the beach? Huh? Did he tell you that that was the first time he had ever been to the beach? No, sir. Was it the first time the kids had ever been to the beach? Not that I can recall. I don't know. Was there a video taken while y'all were there? Um, not that I know of. Have you watched a video from the beach this morning? Um, 
Yes, I seen it this morning, but I don't remember that. Okay. You know, it's time the defense would offer 298 a, a minute video from the beach. No objection. That objection. It's 298. Yes. Children's on the beach. First game. Come on, Dad. Hey. Yeah. Get, go out there and do a big old jump splash. Go do a big old jump splash. Go out in the hay. Go to, look. Look at that big wave. Go get it. I'm going to shoot with my sandals. I'm being washed away. Keep going. Is that a lane down there at the beach? Yeah, what's a lane? Uh, on the way to Florida, did anything happen to the car? Um, as we was driving, well, anybody that knows kids, like when you driving a short, a uh, long period of time, kids tend to get agitated and. So the kids start like moving around, yelling, jumping around and stuff. And Mr. Jones told him that he would pull to the side of the road and make them get out and do squats. And I was like, oh no, you know, so. You thought he was serious? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and you stopped it? Yeah, I was like, no, but we just kept on driving. But once he told the kids that they just settled down and he was like, y'all just take a nap and go on to sleep. And that's what they did. Um, was there an incident that happened in the hotel room while y'all were at Disney? Yes. And, and what happened? Um, what ended up happening after Ms. Jo oh. Mr. Jones um, went across the street to uh, go to the bar, um, the tongue started jumping around, and I asked him to stop, and Gabe just started screaming, like squealing to the top of his lungs. And I kept asking Gabe to stop, but by that time, um, Mr. Jones came back and he heard it. And he um, was like, "Did you? Did, I know I just heard her tell y'all to stop. Y'all didn't." And he pulled down both their pants and spanked them with a belt. Um, and that was in front of you. Yes. And, and what did you do? I was just like, after you know, I was just like, "Don't you know, stop." Okay. So did he stop? Yes. Um, did you have some concerns about uh, what the children? whether or not they were getting enough to eat? Yes. And, and why was that? Um, it was like when he would like <sighs> McDonald's, like it would be like only one to 20 piece nugget with two large fries. And, you know, they would have to share that 20 piece nugget. Me being at the house and feeding the kids oatmeal all day, it wouldn't really be nothing. I probably remember one time he came back with a little Caesar's pizza. It was like only one box of little Caesar's pizza. <coughs> but other than that, that's what I fed the kids all day is oatmeal. Um, so you were never there when he fixed dinners? Oh, no. By that time, I would, I would leave. I worked it from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at night. Okay. And the one time that he did buy a 20-piece nugget was with you when he was in Florida? Um, I don't recall the 20 piece nugget when we was in Florida. I remember stopping by Chick fil A okay. and he went in there and got food while me and the kids was outside and he walked inside and got food and brought it out. Okay. Yes. But you don't remember this 20 piece No, I don't remember no 20 piece nugget. We never stopped by McDonald's in Florida. In Florida. On the 30. No, not that, not that I remember of, but I remember it was a Chick fil A. Okay. Yes. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. While y'all were at Disney, uh, did you notice Tim doing any drugs? Sir? Did you notice Tim doing any drugs? No, sir. Did you ever think that he was high? 
Uh, not that I know of. Um, I do remember uh, one morning, I knew he smoked cigarettes. I do know that. I remember one morning of me going to the house. Like I said, it had to be at 7 o'clock. And I remember one morning of going in the house, going to the house. I pulled up and there was like this smell, like this chemical smell. It wasn't bleach. I cleaned with bleach. So I know what bleach is. Um, but it was just like an awful smell that makes my nose burn. And when I asked him about it, he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I was like, oh, that is awful. He was like, well, I got to go. I'm on my way to work. So I walked in. I checked on Elaine. She was sleeping inside her playpen in the living room. Went and checked on the other kids. And I opened up the front door to try to air it out. When the kids got up, I um, made them something to eat. And I was like, we're going outside until then. Because they was like, what is that? And I was like, I don't know. But it was just like an awful, awful smell. Don't know what it was. Don't know what he was doing when I got there, before I got there, but it was just. That was back here in Lexington, right? Yes, Red Bank. Yes. Um, so after y'all came back from Disney World, mm -hmm. how much longer did you work with Tim? Um, not too much longer after that. Okay. Yes. What happened? Um, I was using my dad's car. And my thing was that when I got off, my stepmom worked at the airport. So when I got off, um, I would have to, sometimes I would have to go pick her up. And it was just this one particular day I got off and my dad had already got picked her up. And I got to the house and I had a phone call from Ms. T um, Mary Tanner and was like, I had some mail at her house. So I was like, okay, so I went up there and I got my mail and I came back and I could tell it was tension. So when I, me and my sister wrote to the gas station, I was like, what's going on? And she was like, I'm not getting, I said, no, you're going to tell me what's wrong. You know, I said, I don't like walking back into a house and something's going on. So my sister was like, well, daddy and them said that you don't put gas in the car. And I did, I just didn't put it in when they wanted me to put it in. And so I got gas that morning and I was just like, that's it. I. I'm gonna give them back the car. I'm not keeping nobody's car. I just don't, won't have no um, way to work. So that's the reason that I stopped keeping the kids. It was not about financial reasons. It was about that I could not make it work without having um, transportation there. Did Tim think that you owed him money? Yes. He um, told me that I, he had paid me two weeks in advance, but I know he didn't. So he had told me, say, okay, um, Christina, he had told her, he was like, you know, I know that sure. She told me that he was like, I know that's your friend. Um, just let her know that if she doesn't pay me back, then I'm going to have to take further actions as far as, um, taking her to court for my money. So my reply back to her was, well, you tell Mr. Jones, he does what he has to do. Whatever he has to do, he does it. Okay. Yes. And, and that was shortly before you called DSS? That was way before. That was like before. Yes. And, and you called DSS in August of? 2020. It was, I think it was around by August, I want to say. Yeah. Okay. Now, this call to DSS in August of 2014, had you been with the kids that day? Had you been with the kids in August of 2014? Um, Not that I can recall of. Okay. You talking about when I made the call? Yes, no, I was nowhere around the kids then. Okay. I just remember after I stopped keeping them, I asked Miss Elke to please make sure that she fed them because I wasn't too sure how he fed them at nighttime. I just remember me feeding them oatmeal all day. And I remember a certain time when they had told me it was one day that he was getting off work and I had, they just kept asking for oatmeal all day and I fed them. You know, any kids, I'm going to feed them. I don't care how much that kid done ate, like an hour, two hours ago, I'm going to feed them. And I remember they said, Miss Joy, could you not tell Daddy you just fed us? Because he might not feed us again. And I said, I would never do that to y'all. Were there, were there times where there was leftover food in the fridge that they were supposed to eat? It was um, one particular day I got there to the house and I watched the kids Monday through Friday. And... I got back, I forgot what Pacific day this was, but I got back, but it was something where Gabe wouldn't eat his food. 
And I remembered I had made the kids food. I had cooked them, was cooking them oatmeal that day. And I remember, I can't remember who it was, but they went to the refrigerator and they pulled out this bowl. And I was like, what is that? And they was like, that's what daddy made a couple of nights before, but Gabe wouldn't eat it. So he said, Gabe has to eat it. He said, they said so much joy, Gabe has to eat that food. And I said, no, he's not. He's going to eat what we're eating now. I'm not making him. And I threw it away. No, it's because it was ten policy that the kids didn't finish their food. They had to eat it. it yes. Um, it was also one particular time that um, Gabe, I, it was something with Gabe. I don't know. I could never figure out what it was with him. But Gabe would like smile. Like it would, he would have like this smile on his face. So when he chewed, he chewed with his mouth open. And um. And I knew it was just something special. And like one day I didn't know what was wrong. I said, Gabe, I said, that's true with your mouth closed. And he closed his mouth, but then he opened it again. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to pressure him because something, something's wrong. And I never questioned what it was. And I remember the kids was like, Gabe moved from the table. And I was like, why? And they was like, well, last night when we was eating dinner, um, dad made Gabe move from the table. And he made him move from the table while the rest of them finished eating. And when they finished eating, Gabe was able to come into that table to eat. And I was like, I'm not doing him like that. Were the kids ever scared of him? No, not that I care. You know, I mean, they're kids. You have kids that even if they're, you know, they love their daddy. And I know they love their daddy. Um, But... They just knew when they did something, you could tell that if they knew they was going to get in trouble or not. But no, they never seen that they were scared of their dad. Was there a time where uh, I think you took Mira to a place where a friend painted her nails? Um, it was a time that she was at Miss Elke's house. I wasn't there and I had called to check on them. And she was telling me that um, her daughter had painted Mira's nails. And I guess, you know, Mira just enjoyed getting her nails painted. And once she realized they was painted, she starts freaking out. And was like, um, Ms. Elke said she just started freaking out. I was like, get it off, get it off before my daddy come. And he ended up coming. And he was like, Mira, you know better. Because that was against the rules. Because that was against the rules. Um, they, you know, Mira had to wear like, long dresses or like you know pants and stuff like she couldn't wear like shorts or whatever or you know but just certain ways that he wanted his kids to dress and fingernail polish was out the ordinary but no i was not there that day i i called to check to see how they was doing and that's what miss elke said if she they had painted and when she realized they painted then she started freaking out you thought tim was weird um yeah yeah um, he never told you you heard voices? No. Um, he never told you that he was afraid of the kids? Oh, no. Ms. Flora, one of the reasons yeah. you ended up in that job is because you love kids. Oh, yes. Everybody knows that about you. Oh, yes. And these kids, you love with your whole heart. Oh, yes. Yes. All five of them. Yeah. <laughs> When you saw what you saw at Disney World, did you know at that time that there had been a DSS action where he was not supposed to lay hands on those children? No, ma'am. He never told you that. Oh, no, no. That whole time you were working for him that summer, he never once told you there's a DSS case and I'm not allowed to discipline my children. No, ma'am. By hand or by belt. No. Y'all spent that whole time together on the trip down there. Mm hmm Eight hours, pretty much. Mm -hmm. mm hmm And then, and we'll just need you to say yes. Yes, I'm sorry. Right I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> sorry. But y'all were in the same hotel room. Mm hmm Yes, ma'am. And then the ride back together, you're in that same car. Car, yes, ma'am. Before that, you had taken the trip together to Myrtle Beach. Myrtle Beach, yes. Same car. Same car. Same hotel room. Same hotel room. Um, so you spent hours upon hours with this man. Didn't yes, ma'am. And during that whole time, Miss Lord, there was never a single sign that there was anything wrong with him mentally. Oh, no. No. He always knew exactly where oh, he yes. was. Oh, yes. Yes. 
what he was doing. Yes, he knew who I was, who the kids was. Never had any type of a situation where he had a break from reality. No. He always knew right from wrong. Didn't yes, ma'am. So he chose not to tell you that he wasn't supposed to lay hands on the kids, but when you saw it, how did it make you feel? Um, kind of bad, you know. Made me feel real bad for him. Natan was six. Natan was six. Were his pants on or down? Down. And was that with his hand or with the belt? With a belt. Gabe was two. Two, yep. And he had that two-year-old pull his pants down too, didn't he? Yes, ma'am. Struck him with the belt too, didn't Yes, ma'am. Repeatedly. Yes. That stayed with you, didn't it? Oh, yes. Yes. So when you made that call to DSS, Miss Lord, you were there with Miss Tanner? I was right there with her. Um, I got to her house that day, and I was just, because me and her haven't seen each other in a while, and she just basically asked me how I was doing, and I got to talking, and when I talk, I just start ramming it on, and I started talking about Mira and them and the stuff that I felt, you know, that I knew they was going through, and I was like, I feel like if I make that call to DSS, there's nothing going to be done, and she said, well, we're going to make this call together, and I said, okay, and that's the second thing they did, they did nothing. So that's one of the things that weighed on you. You felt like you needed to report it, but you weren't sure that it would lead to anything. Yes. Still weighed on you. You talked to Miss Tanner about it. And the decision was made to call DSS. Yes. Even though in your heart you felt like. Yes. They wouldn't do nothing. Yes. Yes. You were right there when that call was made? Oh, yes. That call into DSS? Did it name Natan as the person that had been hit at Disney World? Yes. Did it name Gabe? Gabe. Yes. Been hit at Disney World? Yes. So DSS had that information? Yes, ma'am. That trip to Disney would have been early July, I think is the stipulation. Yes. So we're talking roughly seven weeks, maybe? Yes. For the children were killed. And up until that very last time that you saw Tiffany Jones and had a communication with him. Yes. Ms. Lord, was there any doubt in your mind that he understood the communication between you? Oh, yes, he, he knew. Was clear and he was clear. He was clear, yes. Um, when I work for a family, I like to know the parents, the grandparents. Um. It was one particular time there was a photo album under some clothes and I forgot it was one of the kids that put out like, oh, a photo album. When I go to people's houses, I like to look at pictures. I like to ask questions. Who is this in your family? Um, and I was like, can I look at the album? And one of the kids put it out and we looking at it and they seen their mom. They seen the picture of their mom. And I said, who's that? And they said, that's mommy. I said, that's mommy. They said, yeah. They said, Miss Joe, I wish you could meet our mommy. I said, I wish I could meet mommy too. Because me working for a family, even regardless if you're a single mom, single dad, um, I like to know grandparents, aunt, uncles, you know, I would like to get to meet the family and stuff. And, and I felt with, even though their mom, even though I never got to meet their mom, and no matter what her and Mr. Jones was going through, I felt that it was right that she had a right to know who was keeping her kids. That's just me, you know, I would want to know who's keeping my kids. And they did. They said that we wish that you could meet our mommy. And I said, I wish that too. And they spoke good of their mommy? Oh, yes. They loved their mama. Yes. They told me they could not wait till they got ready to see her. And how did the children react about that photo album when they thought their, their dad was coming home? Um, they hurried up and put it back. They, I was like, once we finished, they put it right back. Um, they was like, don't tell daddy that we showed you this photo album. I said, I won't. Because in his presence, did you ever witness the kids being able to talk positively about their mom? Oh, no. No. Um, they was never allowed to talk about their mom. Do you remember the defendant telling you, well, the children don't have no respect for women? Yes. What was your response to that? Um, I told him, I said, well, 
with me being a woman, if I'm going to be around them, they will have respect for me. So my thing with that was, you know, he had his opinion or whatever, but you know, so. Do you recall telling Mr. Jennings that it was in fact him who didn't have respect for women? Mm hmm Yes, you could tell he was, it was just something about women. Women should be seen and not heard. You mentioned earlier on direct examination that the kids were hungry. How often did you see that? Um, a few times, a lot of times and stuff. Elaine, like, if I would be cooking or whatever, she'll start, and I'd be like, I'd be like, baby, it's almost done. Like, she would go, like, screaming, like, screaming hungry, like, she hadn't even eaten. What would you normally feed them, Joy? Ma'am? What would you normally feed the children? Um, oatmeal. Yes, um, it was supposed to be a, something delivered to the house from UPS. And I remember him asking me, had the package, he called and asked me, it was the, the package arrived yet? And I said, no. Then I remember shortly after that, he ended up coming home. I don't know what he was looking for, but it was just something important that he was looking for. Some type of package. Some type of package, yes. Yes, it was just something, I don't know, it was just a faint smell. And then the time you recalled that there was some type of chemical that you could smell. It was a type of, I got there that morning, but just type of, like, you could smell it coming through the house. Coming from the house, before I even walked into the house, you could just smell it. When I got in the house, it was just awful. It made my nose burn. You think that was the time, around the time of the Disney trip? Um, Sometime that summer? It was sometime that summer, maybe early on, before. I'm not too sure. And what do you remember about the condition of that time? Before? Um, clothes everywhere, trash overflowing, dishes everywhere, and there was a few. It was roaches. You described uh, seeing him use physical punishment on the children. What oh other yeah. Forms of punishment do you remember seeing that appear unusual? Um, it was where they would have to stand with one leg up, one one arm out, um, squats. Um, it was like different stuff. And then I remember one day Mira um, and Eli was like, they called something. It was a type of name they called something. And he was like, Mr. Jones was like, um, oh, goodness, like that. And he was like, well, go show Miss Joy what y'all talking about. I forgot the name of it. And they walk out, Mira and Eli walks out with this big bed post like this. And I said, he said, well, show Miss Joy what y'all have to do with that. And so they had it like this and they're bending down doing this. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, like they're kids. Like, yes. Oh, yes. No, ma'am. When you made that call to DSS, you weren't aware of it. No, ma'am. Had there ever uh, been a time where you yourself were concerned about the health of the children? Oh, yes. And the environment that they were in? Yes, ma'am. That led you to ultimately make that call to DSM? Yes, ma'am. Even though this time Miss Elkie was keeping them, like I said, I would call her and I would inform with her that before they leave your house, um, you make sure that you feed them. Make sure you give them something because I'm not too sure what he's feeding or how much he's giving them. And she was like, you know I'm going to feed them. And I said, okay. And you not knowing about that uh, DSS plan, 
was there a time that you had a discussion with him? Do you remember him having a discussion about not wanting the kids to be in school? Anymore? Not wanting them to be in school. I never knew about DSS. I just know that he wanted the kids to be in school. They wanted them to be in school and asked me would I teach them at home. And I'm like, I don't have credentials for that. So when he would go to work, his thing was they had little laptops at the house. And so when they got up while I was cooking, um, Mira loved to help me cook. She loved to help me cook. Um, and so a lot of times she would come in the kitchen and help me and uh, other ones, Natan and Eli would um, start doing like stuff like reading or doing math stuff. So he always wanted to do like math or reading or science stuff on their little laptops or get a book out and read. So I would, you know, I would let them do that. But yeah. I told him I did not have the credentials for them to be homeschooled. So it was sometime after May of 2014, sometime after the school had made that report regarding the time, he decided he didn't want his kids to be in public school anymore. Um, Ms. So, yes. And actually wanted you to be the one to homeschool. Yes. You told him no. I told him no because I didn't have the credentials. I can't homeschool a child if I ain't got credentials to do it. Thank you, Ms. Sorry, at time, uh, when you called DSS yes. in August, right? Yes. And you told them that uh, the children had been beaten black and blue? Um, I don't recall that. I recall of telling them that they were spanked with a belt, but I never said black and blue. Okay. So if they wrote that down, they got it. They got that wrong? Yes. Um, and you told them that they weren't getting enough food? Yes. Um, and that was the 20 piece chicken nugget. That was 20 piece chicken nuggets and me, um, feeding them oatmeal like all day, but that was me feeding them. Okay. Yes. Now you said he always knew the difference between right and wrong. Yes. Um, you said he was always rational. Sir. You said he was always rational, rational. He knew what he was doing. Oh, yes. Um, spanking a two year old with a belt is not rational, is it? It's wrong. It's wrong. Yes. Um, making a two-year-old eat days-old leftovers because they didn't finish the meal, that's wrong. That's wrong. Um, the way that Tim disciplined his children, that was not rational to you. No, it was wrong. And you had to tell it that that was wrong. Yes. Um, and there were times where you would tell him it was wrong and he would listen to you. Um, well, he, he would listen. He would, his thing was that women should be seen, not her, and those was his kids. When you told him, don't pull the car over on the way to Florida, he didn't do it. He didn't do it, but he did say to me those was his kids. And when you told him to stop spanking them in Florida, you listened. He, he, he stopped, but I was informed those was his kids. He wanted to do because those was his kids. Right or wrong. He right or wrong. What he wanted to do. Yes. And you weren't going to tell him otherwise. No. In his mind, those were his kids. Those was his kids. And about the black and blue, do you remember seeing Mark Stone Gabe after he got that whipping? Not that I recall. Do you remember the defendant telling you that it was your business to keep the kids and his business to discipline them? Uh, yes. <laughs> But well, we're going to begin tonight with continuing news for coverage of the loss of five very young lives from Lexington County. Tonight, their father is in jail. Authorities say he has confessed to the killings. They expect to bring him back to South Carolina to face the murder charges. Investigators say Timothy Ray Jones Jr. was last seen with his children on August 28th. Deputies say his ex wife reported Jones and the children missing last Wednesday. Then authorities say on Saturday they arrested Jones during a traffic stop in Mississippi. And during that stop, they noticed a bleach smell alongside blood and children's clothing inside his SUV. After running a background check, officials linked the 32 year old father to the missing children. Then yesterday, authorities say Jones led them to a dirt road in Alabama where they found all five children dead inside garbage bags. The grandparents of those five children say they have no idea why their son would do this. We're learning much more about the events leading up to the children being found dead. WYFF News Liz Lohais is here. Liz, DSS uh, had recently visited the home, right? 
Yes, Michael and Carol, DSS went to Timothy Jones's home on August 7th for a report of abuse, but they say they saw nothing alarming. The tragic events that have broken all our hearts. If anyone could answer the question why, it may be those closest to accused killer Timothy Jones. But his parents say they just don't know. We know you have questions, but right now we have no answers. We do know there was at least one previous report of child abuse, the most recent one August 7th. The Department of Social Services says it sent one of its representatives to interview Jones, the five children, and neighbors. DSS said today the social worker found nothing to suggest the children were in any danger. DSS says it had not done a follow-up visit yet. Their policy gives them 45 days from the initial visit to do so. The woman who says she made the report did not want to be identified, but she says she feels DSS did not do its job. These children, it's like they got lost in the system. And I don't understand this. You want people to call and report it, and then nothing happens. And now there's five beautiful children that are no longer on this earth. And, and I just don't understand that. DSS said it planned to make this entire case file public this afternoon, but at this time we have not received it. Meanwhile, the Lexington County Sheriff says the case has hit investigators hard. I'm a father and I'm a grandfather. And um, in all of my years of law enforcement, I have never seen a case like this. The bodies of the five children have been returned to South Carolina. Investigators say autopsies will determine exactly how they died. Michael? All right, Liz, thank you. And we do expect to learn much more about this tragedy in the coming days. Of course, count on updates right here on WIFF News 4 and online on WIFF4.com. We did advise you of your, your rights. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, can you just state your name? Tim Jones. All right, what's your date of birth? 12 2081. All right. And you agreed to talk to us. Yeah, we was talking, but they forgot to push the record button. Okay. So this is part two. All right. <laughs> and when we we went towards the end, we asked you if we threatened in, threatened no, you. you guys didn't threaten me. No one promised you anything. Could you just please say it out loud? No, nobody promised me anything. Oh, okay. We talked about what happened with your children. Well, no, I take that back. You guys did promise me. You guys said, let me go give them a burial and try to help you out. That's so you what you guys promised. Promised a, a good burial for your children. Um, we talked about when you picked your children up Thursday, which would have been um, August 28th. You picked them up from school that day, and something happened that night. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right, can, can you walk us through what happened? I questioned a ton about four outlets that he blew. After a series of not getting any favorable responses out of him, I tried to use more harsh measures to just try to get out of him what was going on because I didn't know what he was doing. I seen four destroyed outlets. Uh, is it for me, him? Was he curious? I just didn't know what was going on. I was trying to make sense of it. I worked him too hard, or maybe it was a combination of the electricity. I know electricity takes electrolytes out of your body. Uh, something happened. Mm -hmm. It was out of the ordinary, and he would tell me. If I would have known it, I mean, I, I would have got him medical help and whatnot, but I don't know what he did, and he didn't tell me. I didn't see any burn marks on his body, so that's why I didn't rush him to the hospital. Mm -hmm. So after the fact, he... He was deceased. And then what, what happened to him? What... How, how did he get deceased? What, what did you do? I sent him to bed after I worked him real hard because he wouldn't answer me. And, and what, what do you mean by working him too hard? I just PT'd his ass till he couldn't handle it. Tried to crack him more butt a couple times to get something out of him to tell me what was he doing. Right. What's his motive? And when you say PT him, what, what are we talking about? Squats and push-ups. Squats, push-ups. How, how long were you having him PT? I am PT like an hour. Like I said, there's nothing out of the ordinary. Those kids would do insanity with and me. We had fun doing it. And where did he go from you're doing this? Where in the house? Where are you PTing? This was in the living room, and then I finally got tired of him and sent him to bed. Okay. Tired to bed. You're not telling me the truth. I can't help you. Go to bed, man. You're wasting everybody's time. And then and then you you find out what? I come back and find out that he's deceased. And when I find out he's deceased, then the shit hits the fan and all. 
How does the shit hit the fan, Tim? The voices start going off, and then here comes the paranoia. Oh shit! What just happened? What what what, what just happened? This ain't gonna go. I can't call. Blah, blah, blah. I got all these voices running through my head now. And then what happens, Tim? What did you tell us earlier? So Natan was was dead, and then what happened? And then I followed suit with the other four. And how did how did you so kill that them? That was with my hands. With your hands? Can you describe what you mean by with your hands? Around their neck. Around their neck? Okay. <laughs> who, who was next? I'm just going to put the order so I don't have to go into too much detail. Okay. Just, just tell us right. the order. Natan, Mira, Elias, Gabriel. Wait, wait, wait. Natan, Eli, Mira, Gabriel, Elaine. <laughs> and when did you say this was, Tim? What date? You told us earlier. Thursday, I think. They were supposed to go to school Friday and they didn't go because, well, they couldn't go. Yeah. And you said also that this happened where? At the house. Can you tell me what that address was? 2155B, South Lake Drive. What county is that in, Tim? Lexington, South Carolina. Lexington, South Carolina? Okay. What, where in the house did you say this happened at? In, in the house? The bedroom, or not bedroom, the, the living room. Okay. What what did you do um, earlier? You you said when you would strangle them. What would you do with the bodies at that point? At that point, I was just running on fear, and I wasn't thinking. Any normal person would have said, "Let me call the police and just turn myself in." Okay. I took the coward route and started following those voices in my head, which led me down such a nice path I'm on today. And what, what did you do then? What do you mean? With the bodies. I put them in bags and threw them on the hill. Okay, no, no, no. When when you're at the house... Oh, load them. I just load them in the car. Did you put them in the bag at that time? I don't know. Okay. I was just buy the bodies. You put them in, in the vehicle. Uh, what type of vehicle was that? Cadillac Escalade. All right. And what do you do from there? I start driving out of fear. Tim, tell us, what was your original plan to do with the bodies, now that we've had a chance to talk about it? I don't know what my original plan was. I had so many thoughts going through my mind. What, what were some of them? Because you brought some notes and you bought some I had a hundred different thoughts about what I could do. Okay. I don't want to sit and incriminate myself, but no, I, had, fine, I had a bunch of different things. I, you know, one, duh, 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 duh. We went over this, but part of your plan was to do what? The bodies. I think originally I intended to go do all that stuff that I wrote down on the paper, but Which then I could what? bring myself to it. I was right? Gonna, what, tried to, what was it? To do stuff to get rid of the corpse. Do you remember what step one was? I was going like, to dissolve them or something like that. I was going to cut them up. And you were gonna, I was going to do all kinds of did stuff. Did you write down that you were going to burn the bodies? I think I was going to burn them, yeah. And you were going, going to, what was step two? Boil them or I forget what it was. That's what I'm trying to tell you. I don't remember everything. Yeah. Yeah. Did you write that you were going to... Um, I wrote stuff down that it was in the context of that time, but... All right. Was it something that you were going to uh, cut the bodies up? Something I could bring myself to do, yes. All right. Let's, let's take a look here. All right, Tim, while he's looking that up, I also want to clarify when... When you last saw Christine, Christina, Christina, your next door neighbor. Oh, when I last saw her, uh, when I last saw her, the kids were actually still around. She said she spoke to you on the second. Ah, she talked to me. She yeah. talked to you on when the she second. Last, when I last seen her. Mm -hmm. And or the children. So she talked to you on the phone. Then. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the children were deceased. And, and I lied to her and told the kids, yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. I want to go through this real quick with you. We don't have to spend a lot of time on this, but we went over this. <clears throat> what? What is day one? Burn up bodies. What's day two? Saw down bones. What's day three? MB smiley face dissolve, dissolve and discard. Okay, so your initial plan was to do these things with, with their bodies. That was one of them. I told you there's other stuff. That just happened to be the one that's materialized. I had a million bucks going through Okay. Let's go over this. This is what? Head of the campground, no bodies, and send bodies to dust your small bodies. Small discard by a sanitation plant. 
Okay, so these are some of the things that were going through your head? That was, that's just a small amount of stuff that was going through my head, yes. Did you write this before or after you killed the children? After. After? I wasn't premeditating this, no. Okay. This was not premeditated. This was a, oh shit, what just happened? So you had the bodies in, in the vehicle. Did you write this in your house, in the car? Where did you write these notes? That was on the back of a clipboard mm -hmm. in the house, I think. Yeah, I would think that would have been the house. I'm not good at writing and driving. Okay. Did you did you do this before or after you put the bodies in the car? I don't remember. Okay. I don't, I'm sorry, those details I don't remember. Now, we had also gone through some of what uh, what you went and purchased, um, and specifically at the, at the Walmart. Do you remember that? Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can find the receipt for that. Drug of choice and nicotine. What what did you purchase at the uh, at the Walmart? Uh, I don't remember which Walmart. This would have been the one in West Columbia. Uh, well, the receipt. I don't remember. Okay. Did you buy a saw there? Uh, yeah. Oop. Yeah, okay. Did you buy? Let's go over this this receipt here. This receipt. Is going to be from Gusser Road in West Columbia. Okay. All right. And the date here is nine three. So this is this is after because what happened to the children was on Thursday. What day was that? Is that 28th. correct? That's the twenty eighth. That makes sense. Now nine three. This is on Wednesday. So this is after the weekend. And where have them children been the whole time? With me. Where? Drive around on a vehicle, I think. What, where are they, though? They're with me in the car. Okay. They're all in the back? Yes. Okay. Well, in the middle, not back. So back implies the, sorry, back implies the back where you open. Uh, and you, I saw, that, and I you told me earlier they were, you had them covered up in some sheets or blankets? Yeah, I do blankets and a shitload of air freshener. So you have, you have their bodies there. You go and, and you purchase what? Walk me through what you're purchasing here. Uh, I don't know what it rose. All right. What's uh, this? A dust mask. This is actually Gatorade, but oh. dust mask. Some goggles and some hand saws. Some jab saw, it says. And a multi-saw. Multi-saw. What's this here? Uh, some muriatic acid. And what's this here? I think a five gallon pail. All right. Were you purchasing this stuff at that time because you initially thought you might be able to go through with this? Partially, and then I couldn't bring myself. You, you just couldn't do it. Okay. So one of the next receipts we kind of talk about is going to be several days later. I um, had these thoughts in my head to try to do this, and then I couldn't bring myself to do it. Okay. Now we go to the following day. This is going to be the fourth. This is at the Dollar General store, and we're still in Orangeburg, South Carolina. What do you purchase there that we spoke about? <coughs> Excuse me. What's this here? Some bag, trash bags. Trash bags. Why'd you buy those trash bags? <laughs> to do what now? Put the bodies. Put the bodies. Okay, to throw some of my own trash out too. Okay. I had a lot of stuff in the vehicle I was trying to throw out. Now, you said you were, you're just driving around, you had the bodies in the car, and wh wh where were you going at that time? Nowhere, I guess, because in my mind, I'm just running. I have nowhere to go. Because you didn't plan this. I didn't plan this, no, it's just like, spontaneous. this is spontaneous, and I just fucked up my whole life. Okay. One bad incident, and I'm not following through with what I should have and I now we we spent some time really trying to figure out where where your children are at yeah. what what did we kind of come up with looking somewhere on route 10 between I think Greenville and Campbell well, let's go back to okay. September 5th yeah. Friday night what, what did you tell us happened Friday night September 5th that was that was when you said your vehicle got stuck okay. Yeah, so tell us I, about that. I pulled off to the side at somebody's house to try to collect myself to see where I was at. Yeah. 
and in the process of pulling back onto the road, I got stuck in a ditch. You got stuck, and what happened? The tow truck had come out. He called a wrecker. All right. Did you have any law enforcement contact that night? A law enforcement just showed up on his own. He was patrolling. And okay. Can you describe what he looked like? Uh, probably about maybe 5'10", shaved hair, uh, Caucasian male. Okay. When you have contact with this officer, where are your children? In the car. Okay, they're dead in the car. Yes, sir. Okay, and they're still where you set them. Yes, sir. What, what's going on in that car since they've been sitting for so long? I mean, this, you kill them on Thursday. No, the... they weren't sitting there. Some of the time, I took a couple of days and just stayed home. Okay. Did you leave them in the vehicle? Or were they in the house at that time? I think they were in the vehicle and I was just sitting there. Not, not what you think. We want no, to know I mean, the I truth believe is. that was that believe that they were in the vehicle. But you're talking was... about the weekend it happened. Yes, and I was just sitting there thinking, oh, uh, what am I going to do? Okay. Well, does that make sense? Yes, it, it makes sense. Does this tie this together? Because that's what I'm trying to tell you. What so, I know. Sure. Yeah, so yeah, Tim. all I'm saying from that Thursday, though, the 28th, and you say after all this happens, you place their bodies in the vehicle. Uh, yes. Between then and the time you come with, uh, in contact with the officer, and that would be Friday on September 5th. So we have over a week's time that has passed by. Your children are still, still in the vehicle. Is that correct? What date? Friday. When you, you have contact yeah, with so the law? Yeah, so the next Saturday was, yeah. Okay, so they're in the vehicle the whole time. What's kind of happening in the vehicle? As far as how does it smell in there? Stinks like shit. What's happening with the children? You're telling me before. I just what? I, the blood was probably just coming out of their bodies because I just left them in there, and mm -hmm. I believe that. Well, as far as I know, I think when your body dies, you well, blood and water separate. I think that's now we we had asked because you purchased the saws and everything. Had you used any of the saws on your children? I think I tried to start on that time and I couldn't bring myself to do it. Okay. And we'll, we'll, get, we'll, we'll get to we'll get to where that happens. Had you tried with any of the other children? Mm -mm. No. It was kind of the whole center of this thing. Mm -hmm. He's what kind of started this all. He triggered us all. If if he would have told you what happened to the outlets that night, I would have got I would have went and acted appropriately to try to help him. No, none of this would have happened. I think he didn't tell me because I think it was intended for me. I think that's why it would make sense okay. for him not to tell me. So let me ask you, so you have contact with the law enforcement officer Friday night. The children are still in the vehicle. That would have been uh, on the 5th. The 5th, yes. Saturday is when you get picked up here. The 6th. That, that's going to be the 6th. That's Saturday. But that Saturday morning, we look at this receipt. And th this is where? The Greenville, Alabama. Greenville, Alabama. And, and what, do you remember what you buy there? Ten packs of cigarettes and some Zuzus and Wham Whams. Okay, and I just see groceries, so I, I don't know what, what you purchased there. Yeah, candy but, bars. And, and if, if the time on the receipt is correct, it's telling us 8.18 in the morning. Yep. Your children, uh, they're still in the vehicle with you. You're positive about that on Saturday. Not the whole day, yeah. Okay, at that time, though. Yeah. Okay, so you go from Greenville, Alabama, and then the next receipt we have is Camden, Alabama. And what do you do in Camden? I pulled some money out. I was intending to go to Vegas. Okay. And you take out $500? 500 bucks. All right. Now, that time is at 1.06 p.m. At that point, were the children in your vehicle? I don't believe they were. I think that they were gone. You already disposed of them? I'm pretty sure. Okay. Right. So, With that in mind, can you describe to me what you were telling me earlier about where you disposed of your children at? They're in some wooded road log truck looking thing off on the side in bags. Was it a two lane road that this was off of? I think so, but I'm not 100% okay. sure. You said it was a heavily wooded area? Uh, it was heavily wooded. It looked like if you went up in the area where I did, it was either like some of the trees got knocked out of the way, like people potentially either starting to clear it or maybe somebody came through there and was bulldozing up ATV path or something. I don't know. It was, okay. wasn't something that was incorporated. That's kind of what I was saying. It was unincorporated. Unincorporated. Your children, 
you, you do what once you, once you get to this location? Put them in bags and put them off to the side. Okay. Tell us about Natan. Does this happen there? Or this happen in a separate place where you well, you, you said you, you started to cut him. You started to happen there. Where where did it happen? In the vehicle, outside of the vehicle. Outside of the vehicle. And what do you do? I began to try to saw a leg, and I couldn't bring myself to finish it. So how, I can't do that. How, how far did you get? Maybe about that far, and I was like, I can't do that. I can't do that to him. Okay. So you him. you did not cut his leg off. No. What what did you do with his body? I just put him in a bag and said, I gotta sit you guys over there. I said a prayer for him and walked away. Okay. Did you place each child in, in a separate bag? And then did you walk them a couple at a time or one at a time? What which which is it? A couple at a time. A couple at a time? Uh, just however many trips it took to get five of them over there. Now we asked if they're gonna be Essentially, all together. If they you put them in now, different places. Now, I put them in the same place. If somebody didn't check the bags and they started looking in there, moving around, I don't know what. Mm -hmm. For all I know, they they may not be there. Okay. I'm not lying to you that much. I'm telling you the truth. I don't know what happened. Obviously, between where I put them and the time I'm here now, I don't know if somebody went back and you. You said they just look like they're a pile of five bag, five garbage bags. Five garbage. So it looks like they're just garbage there. Okay. So what, what, what do you do then? Do you try to hide the bags at all? I just put them off to the side. I knew there was no hiding bags. There ain't no hiding this. I'm gonna get caught. This is just, just a matter of time. I'm buying myself time. I'm gonna get caught. So you go. You don't try to hide the. Uh, in other words, you don't cover the bags up, but you go back to your vehicle, and from your vehicle, I just drove. Drove. Aimlessly. And then, and, and then I well, I say aimlessly. I was in an aimless path toward Las Vegas. That's why I was doing this, and that explained me going around the major cities. All right. And it explains my travel, line of travel, maybe. Until you get here in Smith County. And then I didn't intend to get yeah. And then that's when everything blows up in my face. Now you were telling us that was actually in the car, it was not spice, but they are called. It's the Scooby Snacks. Okay. You said and, locally in Lexington County, you bought those from where? Uh, time warp. Time warp. And and what do they kind of do for you? They calm the voices down inside my head to All let right. me be at peace and not act on them. They kind of give you the same um, high as is 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 what drug is? I think you're talking about the. T yeah. It it's like marijuana in the sense that it gives you a high, but it's not the high that I'm looking for. It's the effect of quieting this. It's medication. I know that sounds stupid as hell, but it. That's why I need to see a doctor. Okay. We'll go through these. We, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, this will answer a lot of that. Sure. You got, sure. You have any other questions? Well, what, what, what I want to do, we'll, we'll go through this, and but as we've done this today, um, nobody has threatened you today, and we'll go over this in this form. Is that is that correct? Yes. And do you think we treated you fair today? Yes. All right. You've done the same for us. Have you been completely honest with us? Yes. Now, one thing though. You didn't tell us about taking that saw to Natan, not until we started this tape. You had not mentioned that. But I told you, we're going we're gonna to perform autopsies on your children. We're going to find them. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me the four children, four of them, it's, we're going to find out that they were suffocated. Now, you're, yes. you're grabbing your hands, you're putting them around your throat. That's what you did? Yeah. Okay, that's how you suffocated them? Did you put a pillow over that? No. No. All right. If you could just say out loud what you're doing. I use my hands to suffocate my kids. Is there uh, anything else we need to know, Tim, about what happened to him? Anything you may have attempted to do to him afterward? I used a belt too. Used a belt too. How'd you use a belt around their necks? Did you do that with all five children? No. With who? Who did you use the belt on? I forget which ones. I, okay. I used it. As, uh, what? The, what is the autopsy going to show with Natan? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you use the belt on him? It's gonna, I, I don't know, I didn't use the belt on him. No, he, I came in and he was gone. And that's when, that's when I went into panic mode, if you will. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you're, you're not sure what I'm the not, autopsy will show I, for, for Natan? I don't know what it's gonna show. I don't know what actually was the, I don't know what his actual cause of death was. That's just the point, I didn't wanna go I was afraid I was going to just get myself locked up. Yeah. Did, 
Did you use the belt on on Eli? I don't think I did. I think it was just bare hands. What? I'm not 100% sure. I don't want to lie to you. Those memories yeah, right? are clouded. Well, what about who do you remember using the belt on? On the babies. On the babies? <laughs> who were the babies? Tim. Pardon? Gabriel and Elaine, is that correct? What is, Elaine is also known as Gab Abigail, right? Yes. Okay. And when you say the belt, you put the belt around their... I used the string one. Used the string one. Why, why didn't you use your hands with them? I don't know. At that point, I wasn't thinking. At that point, I was just thinking, run, get rid of the bodies, and you're fucked, Tim. What, were the older children, did they put up a fight? I mean, what person's not? Right. You, you told us earlier that Eli said something to you before you killed him. What did he say to you? Take me with, Dad. What do you think Eli meant when he said that? Uh, I think he just wanted to go where I was. He knew Natan was gone. Mm-hmm. So they... I, think, I don't know exactly what he meant by that. I mean... I don't know where he thought I was going. I didn't even know where I was going at that time. This is just happening. That fuck. It's like my mind. I don't know what to do now. Did any of the other children say anything before you killed them? Gabriel said, "I love you." <laughs> oh, I love you too. So I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay, and that's a question I was gonna. You know, we're we're gonna ask you here, is we've we've gone over all this and and you've been honest with us. Are we going to find any of the other children cut up at all? No? You didn't try to burn them at all? I can't replace them. Tim, what, couldn't bring it. Tim okay. what about the bleach in the vehicle? When so you got stopped? cover up the blood. The cover up the blood? Mm -hmm. well, I also, no, in honest truth, I do like bleach because it makes stuff smell clean. So you're probably trying to get rid of some of that odor? Not just vehicle. that. I mean, no. So, I mean, I would carry it around in the car even if I, before, because I liked bleach and it made stuff okay. clean. Like you want to go, that was just me. Like You're also willing to go with us to try to locate the bodies? I am, but like I said, I don't know how productive that's going to be. I don't want you guys to get out there, oh, you're pissing around, wasting our time. I'm not. I'm not. I mean, I drive, but part, forgive me, part of that's a blank. All right, Tim, we're going to, we ran through these questions earlier. Um, you've heard them all, so there's no surprises. Unfortunately, we got to do it again because of the issue with the recorder. Um, first question is, do you know where you are? Yes. Where is that? Smith County. Smith County? Do you know who you are? Tim Jones. Tim Jones. What's your date of birth, Tim? 12-28-1. You know why we've been talking to you? Trying to find out what happened to my kids. Okay. Do you understand that you've just confessed to a crime? Yes. Do you understand that your confession will be used against you yes. in court? Did you confess voluntarily? Yes. Did anyone threaten you if you didn't confess? No. Can you speak a little louder? No. No? What do you think will happen to you as a result of confessing to a crime? I have no clue. No clue? Okay, fair enough. Um, why did you decide to confess? I didn't do the right thing. To do the right thing? That's exactly what you told me earlier. Do you feel guilty about the crime which you just confessed to? Yes. Yes? Okay. If so, why? I felt that I took measures that were extreme, not necessary, because of fear. I fear my life. Because of kids. Okay. Did you do the crime on purpose? Natan was an accident. He was an accident. That was a really an accident. I was just trying to find out what was going on. If you look at that picture of me holding my little son, uh -huh. yeah, it's just a picture of me with the older one trying to say, son, what's going on? Mm -hmm. And he went and tell me, and I don't know if he was messing with the stuff, and so, so the PT took him over the edge. Natan was an accident, but you, you murdered the other four children. Yes. Okay. If, why did you do that? We talked about this earlier. The voices started kicking and said, you better do something. You're fucked now, Tim. Okay. What were you trying to accomplish by doing this crime? I was just trying to flee because I knew my time was short. I was going to get in trouble anyway. I'm not good at being bad. I'm not a good criminal. When did you decide to do this? After Natan had been gone, I started listening to what was going on in my head, and I carried it out. I didn't carry out everything because if I did... I would have cared what was on those papers. That's the stuff that comes out of my head. What did you think about your children, just in general? I think that they were going to have issues like me. 
issues like you, okay. Well, I think that they were going to have issues from not only from a broken home, I think that there's genetic diseases that, that's, that, I think that there was some things that my dad, if you uh -huh. guys had seen yesterday, he doesn't know about my mom. Yeah. I think that there's things I know about my mom, even though I'm not, I wasn't around when that happened because I think I've got some of what she has. What kind of people do you think the children were when you committed the crime? I understand this is a weird question for what we're talking about, but we, we had to ask it earlier, too. I think they were conspiring. I think they were conspiring against you? I definitely, it seems to make the most sense to me. I mean, why else would somebody go do something like that and not tell me what he's doing? Do you understand that you've just, oh, sorry, I'm getting behind myself. When you did this, did you think your actions could hurt the children? Yes. Yes? So you knew that what you were doing to the children was going to—I knew that what was going to harm and protect their lives. It was to protect myself. Okay. I know that sounds fucking pathetic. Now, when you did this crime, did you know it was wrong? At the time, I didn't think any of it was wrong. It happened, and this fuck, I'm happenstance, and let me finish it up now. Okay. When you did the crime, did you know it was against the law? time I didn't think about the law so I'm gonna say no okay the law didn't come into my mind I wasn't caring about the law I'm dealing with dead children on my hands fuck the law I'm in trouble man my kids are dead yeah did you think you might Sorry. get caught no you're fine I knew I was gonna get caught I'm not a good criminal it was a matter of time okay. so why did you think that just because you weren't a good crip I'm not a good grandma's told me something that's the truth Tim you ain't I told it to my kids too you guys ain't good being bad so be good what did you do to protect yourself from getting caught St drive and try to get this guy's the bags and then get rid of the stuff at the house. What all did you get rid of at the house? Uh, everything. I gave the neighborhood. Uh, just, you're just saying your general possessions. Yeah, I just okay. didn't think about keeping my stuff anymore. Well, hell with it. Yeah. I gave all my stuff away. I mean, my life's over. That's what I thought about. Have there been times you wanted to do something like this but decided against it? I mean, I've had these thoughts, but none of this happened until this actually materialized. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Okay, I mean, why didn't you do that in the past if you've had these thoughts before? Why didn't I? Yes. I didn't have any reason to act on them. No reason to act on them? Okay. Would you have done this if a uniformed officer had been standing next to you? Yes. Even I wouldn't have cared. No, man, because... Elbow to elbow with you, you would have still I wouldn't have this. cared, yeah. And here's why. At that point in time, I didn't care because I saw myself as a damn target. And I saw him as having the gun in his hand, if you will. I know he was a kid, but that's how I saw it. Like, shit. He's, and when, you say, when you say him, you're talking about... Natan. Natan. And how old is Natan? Six years old. Six years old. Did anyone tell you to do this? The voices inside my voices head. Voices in your head. And just confirm the voices in your head are not God. They are not God. No, God would... No, this ain't Isaac and Abraham. Okay. When you did this, did you know that society would condemn your actions, even if they knew everything that you know? I mean, at the time, I sort of didn't care. You didn't care? Okay. Uh, yeah, I was like, I don't know, I felt like I was marked for dead, if you will, and I was just acting accordingly. Did you have any strange or unusual mental experiences around the time of the crime? Yes. Of if, course. If so, what were they and, and when did they begin? When he told me what he said? Yes. All kinds of stuff started triggering, and then I worked harder to get out of them to try to see if Maybe it puts it back together, and then I realized that this, he's not doing this per se to... He's not telling me what's going on, <laughs> because it appears he's got something intended for me, and he doesn't want me to know that it's right for me. Because yeah. normally they're pretty apt to tell me the truth, and if they don't, I give them a couple squats and a push-up, and they, they spit it out. Mm -hmm. He ain't doing that, which means there's some motive that he does not want Is me to Is that why you pushed him so hard? Yes, I tried pushing more. Give me some more, I, a little more pressure, maybe he'll just tell me what's going on. That's always worked before, mm -hmm. and so the fact that it didn't work this time tells me that there was something that he didn't want me to know. Yeah, when he got pushed to his limit, did he just die right, pass out right there, or what What happened? Clay he went to bed and he was tired. He went to bed and he just never woke up. And then I came back to check on him and he wasn't breathing. <laughs> I said, oh shit, what have I done? My kid's dead in my hand, they, they're gonna think I murdered him, I just beat him. He's fucking with the owl, I don't know what happened to him. And then all sorts of stuff starts tricking in my head, and that's like the other four become a victim. Tim, have you ever heard or seen things that weren't really there? Yes. If so, has this been when taking drugs? Both, with or without drugs. With and without drugs. What did you see or hear? I've seen people. 
I've had conversations. I've started to talk with people mm -hmm. when there's nobody in the room. You told me shapes earlier. I'll see shapes. Ways. Yeah, uh, it's the strangest thing. I'll, I'll see shapes and things and materialize that aren't real. Mm -hmm. Is this happening while we've been talking to you tonight? Yes. What have you seen while you were talking to us tonight? Well, I see, I see people. What kind of people do you see? Just normal, everyday people. I don't talk to them because if you guys are you're going to say, start talking to me, not them, dude. If you pay attention to what's going on in my cell, I, I get so nutty, I start talking to them. Mm -hmm. Did you, uh, did this happen the day of the crime? Yes. What did you see the day of the crime? Did you see people? Oh, I think you're talking about the... No, the voice. I'm sorry. This goes back to the Just voices. The voices. Okay. Yeah, That's the fine. voices ran rampant in my head. You had. And there was no space for logic to talk. They were so loud that the, the logic was quiet. And the, the. I understand. Do you have any ideas or beliefs that other people think are crazy? If well, so, what are they? I'm a Freemason. A Freemason. Okay. Um. I don't know. They probably think my thoughts about exercise are nuts. But I mean, I tend to think people should take care of themselves. Okay. I'm old school in the sense that I think kids should get their asses busted by a teacher. Okay. I don't like the fact, and here's here's one of my problems. This is what the DSS was about. Yeah. When I grew up, I didn't worry about kids bringing guns to school and blowing the hell out of each other or the teacher. That didn't happen because there was a healthy fear, of, and you got corrected by parents. These day and age, kids bring guns to school because I don't think that they're corrected at home, and they take other people's lives because they got no respect for authority. I said, I will not let my kids go out and go blasting people away because I'm not teaching them to respect human life. Mm -hmm. So that was my whole motivation with the time to push him. Hey, dude, you need to tell me what you're up to, man. I need to know. Yeah. And he wouldn't tell me. So you'd say your personal beliefs affect your actions? Yeah, I mean, I think that's true for everybody. Yeah, I, I think so, too. I don't know who wouldn't be. You know, obviously, if you believe something, it doesn't affect your actions. You don't really believe it that much, do you? Yeah, you say you do, but you don't, right? Yeah. Um, do people ever have difficulty understanding you? Yes. If so, why do you think this is? People say I'm really smart, and I talk at 100 miles an hour, and I talk, I'll go from one subject to another, and it seems random to them, but to me it makes sense. Mm -hmm. my, my, I've understood you tonight. I, I can see how people would think that, though. You're more understanding than a typical person. I can tell that I got a sort of a nuance about people. You're very people person. I can tell. Well, I'm here. I'm here to try to understand. Well, no, no, I'm saying. I, I told you earlier. Not that. all cops are that way. Yeah. Which is kind of why I was resistant to the other ones. The ones that you spoke with last night. And we, I may have some questions for you about that. We'll, we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, the next question, so we can get through these. Have you ever been told that you had a mental illness? By a doctor? Just. Anybody? Uh, I've had, oh yeah, you're fucking nuts, dude. My nickname in high school was the crazy white guy. Crazy white guy. I'm not joking. Yeah, that was my nickname. So people in high school told told you this. You, you told us earlier the military also. Told the military you. said I was wrongly enlisted due to some uh, wrong enlistment. I fell into depression. Okay. Have you ever had any treatment, or have you ever been hospitalized for any of these issues? No, I fought it. You fought it. Okay. I tried it. You, have you ever had a diagnosis? No. No? Do you think you have a mental illness? I think something's not right. I don't know what it, I think I may have some, not a, some. Okay. If I'm anything like my mom, yeah, I've got lots. Oh, gotcha. Were you drinking or using any drugs at the time of the crime? No, it was self-medication afterwards. Afterward? What did you take afterward? Scooby snack. It was the only thing that would try to calm the voices long enough for me to collect myself, and it really didn't work because what I just did, yeah, none, nothing was working. Were you drinking or using any drugs when you were arrested? I think I'd been smoking Scooby Snacks. Scooby Snacks, okay. Speaking of that, can I have another one, please? Another cigarette? Yeah. Oops, still 20 bucks on my wallet. I have buy some more. Do you have any illnesses, physical illnesses? So I'm just telling you what I think based off of my experience. Yep, go ahead. I'm the type who doesn't really like to go to doctors, which is, I, I guess, a that. male thing. Yeah. I think I've got an ulcer. An ulcer? Yeah, and the reason why is because I get those sulfur burps. Mm -hmm. They like eggs, and I, I don't know. And then also, I, some foods will just do a number to my gut. I've mm -hmm. been told I might have colitis or Crohn's. Okay. My digestive tract sensitive. That's why you don't see me eat much. I got you. Hey, speaking um, of eating, you still don't want anything to eat. I'm not nah, I mean, right now. No, I can't okay. eat right now. Um, as far as 
Also, I got issues with my back because I smashed my head. I was so young, I got stuck to the of line and I asked them to give me a, they made me sleep on that hard metal thing and I asked them if I could have a mattress because my stuff hurts and I don't know, I guess they think I was gonna hang myself with a mattress or something. You're talking about here? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But you're, you say you're not suicidal at all. If I was gonna, su if I was gonna do it, it would have already happened. No, man, I'm not willing to take that. I'll do a lot of stuff, but... Because you said your religious beliefs. Taking my know. life is not one of them. Because what happens? You say if you kill yourself... If you kill yourself, well, maybe nothing does happen, and maybe, Lord, I love you, maybe God's a myth, and we die, and we go to the ground. But if he's not, and it's real, well, if, if it does what it says, hell's not a very fun place. I don't think it plans on freezing over anytime soon. I don't want to go there. Were you taking any medications before you were arrested? I don't think so. Okay. Were you taking any medications at the time of the crime? Are you talking about like, well, like I prescription so, medications. So, I mean, I had ibuprofen and naproxen. Okay. So those, yeah, but nothing like, to me, that's all I had. Okay. I didn't have anything Fair else. Enough. That's all they gave me. <laughs> we talked about this question earlier. Have you ever had a seizure or fit? I don't know what the word fit means, but I think I may have had some seizures, the non-violent type. Okay. Did you have one the day of the crime in question? I don't think so. I, you don't think so? I can't say that I okay. did. Have you ever been knocked unconscious? Yes. Yes? If so, when? I mean, I grew up in, as a young teenager in Chicago and I had to protect myself because I'm white and most of those guys aren't white and they don't like me because of my skin color. You know what that means. And you said earlier that you were not treated for these injuries. <clears throat> no, I'm stubborn ass and don't go to the doctor unless I need to. Um, is there... I, I got a few things. We started off today at uh, 1730, or I'm sorry, 19th or about 730 p.m. Does this sound right to you? Yeah. Okay, so we've been here for a number of hours. It's uh, 10 o'clock? It is currently 1053 p.m. Okay. Okay. Uh, ten, That's yeah. Central so time. This is actually we, okay. So we're going off of. Uh, it's actually 9:55 p.m. Okay. So we've been here a number of hours. What time is it? It's 9:55. My my wristwatch didn't change. Oh, yeah, time. yeah. You're from yeah. Carolinas. Yes. Yes. Um, and in that time, you've had a number of cigarettes. Is that is that correct? Yes, sir. Uh, we've asked you if you want to use the bathroom, something to eat, something to drink. Uh, in fact, you, you've had something to drink here. Yes, sir. All right. Um, a couple things I did want to go through with you before. We had talked about when this happened, the, the children, when this happened in the living room, you were saying the bodies were, were on the ground. Yes. And the other kids, did they know it was coming? I don't know. I mean, they, maybe they exposed. I have no clue. Mm -hmm. I wasn't exactly in a state of mind watching. Hey, is he? Does he care? No. Right? Did they put up a fight? Well, I mean, what normal humans not? Okay, and I, I, I understand you're trying to tell me they did. What do you mean by that, though? They just, they didn't want to go. What do you mean? They didn't want their lives taken. Why didn't you get help? Before all this, you, you told us you had thoughts about this. Why didn't you get help? Just put it off thinking I'll do it tomorrow. I'll get help later. Why I'll not give it. the children to your father? I didn't think that way. How about to their mother? She didn't want them. She said that they couldn't come with her if they had asked. They, the two, oh, two of them, Natan and Mira, had made a plot and they originally got DSS involved in the attempt to, they were going to try to get themselves taken out of the house. Mm -hmm. So they made up a bunch of lies, as the, the lady would say. If you talk to her, they made up some stuff that weren't true and they found, she found out, she got to the bottom of it. But Tim, why, why after things happened with Natan, you're telling us that that was not done intentionally? No, that was not done intentionally. The other well, four it was are... done intentionally in the sense that I was trying to just get answers out of him. Okay. Wasn't, I didn't go and intentionally just go hurt him. Why, why not after you had plenty of time, you have over a week's time where those, those children, the bodies now, because at that with point, you? Sir, because at that point I'm not thinking anything but I'm screwed. I'm not thinking logically. If, if I was thinking logically, I would have done that. But I didn't, logic went out the window. All right. I didn't use, I didn't think normal at all. At that point I didn't, I don't know, I wasn't myself. And after everything that's happened, 
you were questioned yesterday. You were mm -hmm. questioned by the sheriff. You are questioned by uh, people with the Mississippi State Police. You don't tell them the whole truth. Why, why not? The guilt hadn't eaten me yet far enough. All right. What you're telling us here today, is this the truth? Yes. The evidence that we're going to see, whether it's the autopsies or when, when we, we find the bodies, is it going to support what you're telling us here today? Yes, barring that I don't know what else you may see, poke, stab, sure. thrown in the car, but, but I mean, I'm, they may have some crush, something there, you're going to find a mark on Natan's leg. Okay. And we, we did talk about, um, the sheriff had told you about a part of a scalp in the car. I don't know exactly how that came about. It may be a, just a thrash of me putting bodies in there. Okay. I don't and, know where that came from. I had asked you if there would be any broken bones and... and um, you might find some now. I don't know as far as... So, I mean, I... Did, did that happen before they died? No. No. Okay. Uh, With, breaking bones wasn't a way to me to... I mean, I wasn't using them at that point. I wasn't thinking at that point, let me break bones to get what I'm going to do done. And no, I was thinking, let me go get this done and get out of here. Well, and, and you know you're being recorded right oh, yeah, now. that's right. Yep, and, and you know this is voluntary, just like talking to us I here know. today. Okay. I'm incriminating myself, I know. But after everything we've gone over, um, what is it you'd like to say about, about your actions? God, I'm sorry. Children, I love you. I hope I see you again someday if I'm worthy to. I'm sorry. All right, and you're, you're willing to go with us? Tomorrow. I'm willing to, if, but I don't, know where, to I, I don't know where to look. I mean, I, I know the general city. I don't know exactly where. I'm willing to try. That's so all I'm telling you. I can't. I, I drove around with the intention that I wasn't ever going to have to go back there and look because I was so ashamed of what I'd done. I'll try. I don't know if I'm going to help you. I'll try, though. I surely will. Because they need a burial. All right, Tim, <laughs> I just got, I've just got a couple of just follow-up questions here. Um, you mentioned... The police officers you spoke with last night, they could have done things a little differently when they spoke to you. Can you just tell us from your experience what you think they could have done better okay, so or worse than what they did? If, if I'm being recorded, can let me say this much. Let me share my experience with mm -hmm. this. So I've done time before. Okay. I don't know that it's, it's, yeah, I've been put up there in the rubber room, no clothes, no mattress, no nothing for the, the whole time. I asked him for a blanket just to cover up because mm -hmm. they cut the shower off of me. I was using that to keep warm. Yeah. I feel that they could have gave me clothes. I said, give me at least something. So there's, I don't want to sound like I'm being nitpicky. I mean, I'm yeah. not the person to be nitpicky, but there's metal that's rusting. And I told him, guys, that produces tetanus. I don't want to get tetanus and they don't care. Yeah. So if I lay on that and you can see the paint was, yeah, look, so there's the paint from the, that's just one. If I pull the shirt off, you're probably going to find pieces on my back. Yeah. Yeah. That's, yeah. It. that's the paint. Well, there's also rusted metal, and I'm afraid I'm going to get tetanus, but they won't give me a, any blanket or any mattress. Well, what about the interview yesterday, though? That's, that's kind oh, of what I'm asking so you So the reason I stiffed on those guys is because, I don't know, they don't talk the way you do. There's something about your approach that makes it very easy to speak to you. Mm -hmm. They weren't that way. No offense. You're intimidating as hell. You're an FBI agent. I'm not so apt to talk to you. You, To me, you're here, and I'm way down here, and you're going to crush me. You're the FBI. I'm just a nobody. Well, well, Tim, I feel like we've had a good talk this evening, and this I appreciate ain't, you this speaking ain't good, to us. Man. There ain't nothing well, good here. Is there anything we could have done better in, in how we, what we all talked about this evening? Shoot, man, I've never been asked that question by you. Not... I can't think of anything better, no. I mean, you think we were we were fair to you this evening and, and gave you an opportunity to tell your story? Yes, but if there's something that you could do for me, it would seriously be to contact my mother. Help me. Yeah, I'm, I'm if you guys really want to help me, please do. I didn't tell you the truth with, this, with the intention I was going to not get help. Mm -hmm. All right, Tim, would you be willing to speak with me in the future if I've got some more questions or some things I'd like to talk to you about? I'm sure you're going to if you see the bodies, yeah. Okay. Uh, that's expected. What do you mean? I mean, when you see the bodies, I'm sure you're going to ask me more questions just because that's... But you're, you're, you're willing to speak to us again if we need to speak again. There's no reason not to at this point. Okay. And I'm detecting... I'm not accomplishing anything by withholding the truth. Well, just for the record, um, I'm Detective Creech with the Sheriff's Department. I'm the case officer on this incident, and I'll 
I'll be back in touch with you. I'm sure we'll have some more questions at some point, okay? And with me is David Mackey with the Federal Bureau of, Event, Federal Bureau of Investigations.